All right, you guys, you're in for a treat today. We're taking a shot at 510 at LA's friendliest casino, The Commerce. We haven't been here in over two years, and after playing this session, it's probably going to be another two years before I return. We're on the wait list for 510, so we take a seat in the 55, which is a $300 to $500 buy in. First hand of the night, we look down at Ace 10 offsuit from the big blind. The plus one position raises it up to $20, and the cutoff and the button both call. I put in the additional $15, and that brings us to a flop which comes Queen, Jack, 10, Rainbow. I start with a check, and the action checks around, giving us two pair on the turn when the Ace of Spades peels off. Definitely a great card for us, although it does put a four liner to the King. Obviously, not going to be leading into three other opponents. I check again, and surprisingly, no one takes a stab at it, and the action gets checked through. I'm thinking at this point that I have the best hand until the jack of spades comes on the river. For that reason, I decide to check for a third time and it gets checked around for a third time. I show my hand and we're good. We're going to take down that $85 pot. Nice to get the session rolling up $60 so far. We look down at king queen from the hijack in the second hand here at 5-5. Five five. The action folds around to me and I pop it up to $20. We get a strange three bet from the small blind when he makes it $35. Yes, you can do that. It's double the raise. I put in the call and we're heads up to a flop. LA's poker at its finest comes out when the small blind puts in a $50 bet in the dark. We see a flop which comes queen, queen, three, bang, we flop trips. The opponent's $50 stand, so I put in the $50. I don't really think raising makes too much sense. If he has a hand like jacks or tens, it kind of announces our hand and lets him get away for a cheap price. I put in the $50 and we're off to the turn. With $175 out there, the turn comes the three of clubs. The small blind now checks. Action's on me, and now I need to go for value. There's some diamond draws, and if the opponent has a hand really good like kings or aces and just decided to play it in a weird way, we need to get value from it, so I decide to bet out for $130. Unfortunately, he doesn't think too long about it and mucks his cards. We're going to take down that second hand of the night now. We're on a little bit of a roll. We have 610 in our stack, and we look down at ace-king offsuit from under the gun. Obviously coming in for a raise here, I make it $20, and the cutoff now 3 bets us to $35 again. What's with these sizing here? You gotta make it like $60 or $70. $35, no one is ever folding. You have no fold equity. The action comes back around to me, and I'm not putting in $15 more with a very strong hand like Ace-King Offsuit. I come in for the 4 bet, and I make it $120. That's a real bet. The opponent doesn't even think about it for less than 5 seconds. He snap calls me. That's interesting, and we're off to a flop, which might bail us out here against Queens, Jacks, or tens comes king seven three with two clubs standard c bet from me incoming here with two clubs on board i bet out for half pot of 120 dollars we're going to take down the third pot of the night 250 coming our way we're up 220 on the session we're on a little bit of a roll here at the 5-5 game we look down at the same hand ace king offsuit and i raise it up to 25 dollars over a limb and i'm in the low jack position the small blind and the player to my right both call so we're going three ways to a flop which comes ace eight six with two diamonds Things are going swimmingly here at the Commerce Casino. The small blind checks. The under the gun now bets out for $50. A donk bet into me. I was the preflop raiser. Do I go for the raise here with a pretty connected board? 7, 9, 5, 7 are both straight draws. Any diamond draws with an ace in it have a lot of equity. Do I go for a raise for like $120 to $150? No, I decided to just put in the flat call, which brings in the small blind as well. We're going three ways to the turn, which comes the ace of diamonds. Bang, we turn trips. I don't know if I should say bang though because diamond draws now get there we're gonna need to fill up on the river to beat those expecting the small blind to check it over to under the gun but now he donk bets into the under the gun position for a hundred dollars which is definitely strange under the gun gets out of the way he probably doesn't have an ace or a diamond draw at this point and obviously i'm not going anywhere with ace king i have top trips on this board but I think a raise would be irresponsible for me. It would only get called by better hands like flushes and ace eight and eight six. Also pocket sixes and pocket eights would obviously call me. So I just decided to put in one white chip and we're off to the river, which connects the board even further. The seven of hearts, nine, 10 now makes a straight and four, five get there as well. Actions on small blind and he decides to check. Do I go for value here with 430 in the pot? Definitely a strange line from the small blind when he bets into two other opponents on the turn when the Diamond draw comes in and then checks it on the river. I've been doing a little bit of studying off the felt, and one thing I've been hearing a lot of is going for value when you have a good hand. I think I have a good hand here. I have three of a kind. I need to get some value against worse aces. A hand like ace 10 through ace queen would definitely call us here for a small sizing. So that's what I decide to do. I go for thin value here and I bet out for $125. Small blind doesn't think about it for too long and just puts in the call. I'm expecting to be good here, not expecting the opponent to just call with a 
flush. So I turn over my ace king and the opponent turns over king 10 of diamonds. Oh boy, he's gonna take down that $730 pot. I guess the board was paired, so he was exercising some caution. But our hot streak comes to a close here. We're now stuck $50 on the session. I top up $100 more, it's almost midnight now, and I look down at Ace Jack Offsuit from the button. The cutoff raises it up to $15. I'm gonna three bet here with a good hand. I make it $45. Pretty standard so far, and he puts in the additional $30. We're off to a flop. In position here, let's see if it's favorable for us. It is not, it comes six, five, deuce, rainbow. The opponent checks it over to me. Do I go for a C bet here, representing all the over pairs in my range? or do I decide to check it back? I exercise some pot control and some deception here by checking behind. I might also do this with a hand like pocket tens or pocket nines. So when the seven of hearts peels off on the turn and the cutoff checks to me for a second time, I decide to check behind as well. I think this is a mistake. I probably should be going for a bet here, somewhere around 50 to $60, looking to put pressure on one pair type holdings. Oh well though, I'm not a perfect player. I check behind and the river comes a deuce of spades. Pretty harmless card. The opponent checks to me for a third time. I have some showdown value with my eight high. If I bet now, my story doesn't make too much sense. Probably just going to look us up with any 7, 6, or 5 in his hand. I check behind, hoping to beat any king or queen highs. That seems to be the case when he turns over a king, but it's followed by a 5. He's going to take down that $100 pot. Probably could have got him off of that if I started firing on the turn and followed it up on the river. But oh well, good news for us, our name finally gets called for the 5-10 game. When it was all said and done, we got out of that 5-5 game for a loss of $336. No worries, we jump into the 5-10 game. It's a $500 to $1,500 cap. I'm in for the max. With $1,450 in our stack, we look down at King Kong from middle position. My right limps and I raise it up to $15. Only the limper puts in the call. We're heads up to a flop in position. We which seems pretty good. It comes queen eight six with two spades. Pretty standard for middle position to check it over to me. That's what he does. Actions on me, and I go for a half pot size bet of fifty five dollars. He's gonna call me with a lot of hands seven nine seven five. Any spade draws ten jack nine jack, and obviously any hand like king queen or ace queen. A lot of hands can call me here. I probably could size up as well to seventy five dollars. But the $55 bet gets the job done. Surprisingly, middle position doesn't have anything he can continue with. We're going to take down that first pot of the night at 510. We have 1500 in our stack. We look down at queen 10 of clubs from the low jack. One limp to me and I raise it up to $50 again. And the small blind and the limper both call going three ways to a flop. With $160 in the pot, the flop comes a 7 4 with two spades. Opposite of a bang, this is definitely a dang flop <laughs> if I'm going to start doing that now. But the action checks over to me and I'm going to go for a bet here representing all the strong aces and spade flush draws in my range. I bet out for $65 into two opponents. We're going to get called in one spot by the small blind here. Middle position gets out of the way going heads up to the turn. When the turn comes the eight of clubs and the small blind checks it to me for a second time. We could slow down here and check but I don't like that idea because there's a lot of spade flush draws out there like king 10, king jack, king queen of spades. And betting here on the turn might get the job done if I go for a pot size bet. I'd pretty much be representing my favorite hand, pocket sevens, pocket fours, or ace king, ace queen. So I decide to go for a nearly pot size bet of $240. The only thing I think he can call us here with is an ace, a set, or maybe a king high flush drawing to the nuts. When the opponent puts in the call, alarm bells are definitely going off in my head, and the five of hearts peels off on the river. The opponent checks it over to me for a third time. I wouldn't expect him to do anything else in this situation. And now we have a decision with 770 out there. Do we go for the third bet, putting pressure on any king high spade draws that obviously have us beat, considering we just have queen high? A lot of people have been saying I don't go for any triple barrel bluffs, and I think this could be a good hand to do it with. So I put my foot in the sand, I cut out some white chips, add some purples on top. The bet is $475 if the small blind wants to continue. It's going to be hard for him to continue with any one pair. And the only aces I expect him to call me with here are ace king and ace queen. Obviously a7 or a4, but I don't expect him to have too many of that unless it's like a4 of hearts. So I like my $475 bet, but I don't like it anymore when the small blind tank calls for $475. 
Turns over Ace Deuce though, not really sure if I like his call there. I'm representing such a strong range. And if he watches any of my videos, he knows I don't bluff too often. This is one of the rare times that I'll do so. But when I turn over my queen 10 of clubs, he probably shows the one pair with a rag kicker. Wasn't even suited, but uh, he's going to get rewarded with that $1,400 pot. And now we're stuck $800 early on in this 510 session. Next hand, we look down at a hand we would have loved to seen in the last one, ace king offsuit. And I raise it up to $50 from the hijack position over a limp from early position. Also important to note is I topped up for an additional $600. So I have a good amount in my stack. Small blind calls in the early position now goes for the limp raise to $180. The old limp raise, I thought that was dead, but uh, obviously I'm not going anywhere with ace king offsuit, even though he's representing a strong hand like queens, kings, or aces. Having both an ace and a king in my hand it kind of blocks him from having kings and aces although he definitely could still have it so i put in the call and going heads up to a flop which definitely isn't good another dang flop becomes jack four nine rainbow early position bets out for a hundred dollars definitely a good price for me to continue here but probably betting 25 percent of the pot with his entire range here which is definitely going to consist of pocket queens kings and aces also pocket jacks maybe tens and nines ace king ace queen are the only hands we're chopping or beating so i decide to let my hand go maybe if i was suited with clubs hearts or spades i probably could continue for a hundred dollars with some backdoor draws but i just let that one go and uh the session is not going too great but then our spirits are lifted when we look down at the jiggities pocket jacks the yannis whatever you want to call it i'm on the button and under the gun pops it up to 35 dollars great news for us is when the cutoff puts in the cold call Three bet incoming for me, the price of poker has now been raised to $135 and both the opponents put in the call. Great news so far for us, we're off to a flop and even better news for us is when it comes deuce 4-3 with two hearts. Obviously a hand like ace-5 now beats us, but there's some heart draws out there. Anyone with a naked ace in their hand might be incentivized to continue for one or two streets. So when both the under the gun and the cutoff check it over to me, I decided to go for a half pot size bet here. Looking to protect my hand and get value from worse, I bet out for $225. Under the gun pretty quickly puts in the call and the cutoff gets out of the way. We have one customer here and we're off to the turn which comes an overcard, the queen of diamonds. Don't really expect him to have too many queens in his range here, unless it's like a hand like queen jack, queen 10 of hearts. When he checks it over to me for a second time, I go for some pot control and I check behind in this $970 pot. The river peels off a pretty harmless nine of diamonds. The only hand that it would really improve is a hand like pocket nine so when he bets out into me for five hundred dollars i look back at my hand making sure i have pocket jacks let's think about the hands he'd be doing this with would he do this with hearts probably would he do this with a hand like king queen i'm not too sure about that probably best just to check it over to me and let me go for one last street of value sets fours deuces and threes i don't really expect him to have too many in his range when i make it 135 preflop the hands i'm losing to here are maybe pocket queens and pocket nines the hands i'm beating are all miss flush draws and the session hasn't gone too well for us so far i don't want to muck a hand as good as pocket jacks i played it interestingly by checking it back on the turn so i decided to put my foot down for a second time in the session and i put in the call hoping to get shown the good news or hear the magic words you're good he turns over a missed heart draw but it happened to be the wheel that he flopped ace five of hearts how does he do that i raise it up to 135 pre and he basically flops the nuts obviously five six is the nuts on the flop but, but ace five is definitely going to be better than most of my three betting range He's going to get rewarded for $500 more there on the river, and I lose a $2,000 pot. Getting absolutely crushed here and smoked like a salmon in this 510 session. I'm stuck almost 2 k in this 510 alone. We're down to 150 left in my stack. I don't want to play on tilt, so I don't add on. I look down at ace-4 of clubs from the button, and I raise it up to $40. Small blind now raises it up to $150 covering me. So when the action folds back around to me, just decide to put in my stack here. If I lose this one, I'm out. I'm going to be hitting the road. In a $310 pot, the flop comes queen jack three all hearts. That's not great news. The turn comes a six of hearts, hoping for another heart on the river. Maybe we can chop this pot, but the deuce of spades is not a welcome sight. Even less welcome is when the under the gun turns over king kong pocket kings and he has us dominated. He's going to take down the remaining of my chip stack. With my tail between my legs, I I tap the table, tell everyone good game, even though they're all my enemies and I'm not happy with any of them. And uh, there's no racking up and heading to the cage. I sit down at an empty table and let's sign out of this video. All right, you guys. Well, that session did not go as planned. Got out of that 300 to 500 game for around a $340 loss. 
and then we lost another 2050 in the uh, 510 or 500 to 1500 dollars buy-in net loss of 2400 dollars on the session probably could have gotten away from those jack's hand when he flopped the straight but that was against the same opponent who called me with ace deuce when i bet all three streets representing ace king pocket aces something of that nature so leave a supportive comment down below i definitely am going to need it after this session it probably isn't the video that's going to get you to do it but if you want to subscribe i'd appreciate it as always good luck on the felt i hope you guys run better than i did in this session as always i'll catch you guys in the next video thanks for watching to the end of my video click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop see you next time